What's up traders, Chris Capri, Second Skies Trading. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you three of my personal strategies and techniques that I use every single day to not just find, but choose the best trade setups. See, the first part of your job when you're trading is to actually find the trade setups, looking through the charts of forex pairs, stocks, commodities, global indices, whatever markets you're trading, is to first find potential trade setups. But then once you've found them, you have to go through many of them and often choose, hey, this one's the best one, this one's not, this one I think is a really good trade setup, this one's questionable. This is a process you have to go through. In fact, I'm willing to bet that as you have multiple times per week, you probably have a lot of different trade setups that come your way, but you're often deciding, hey, which ones should I really be trading if I have multiple setups on a day? You see, your job isn't just to find the trade setups, it's to choose the best ones to trade for that particular day. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you three of my personal strategies that I use day in, day out to find and choose the best trade setups each day that are gonna give me the most optimal profit targets and probabilities to make money. So let's jump into the charts and take a look at these three simple steps and strategies that you can use every single day. Okay, so we're gonna start looking at some trades, not only trades that I'm in right now, but trades that I'm looking at to kind of share with you these three tips that I use to find and choose the best trade setups each day. Now, this first one is super important and it was something that I was kind of very fortunate to learn very early on and practice very diligently early on, which was that you want to be choosing the trade setups that seem the, or look the cleanest to you. So not just the cleanest, but also the clearest. If you're potentially getting into a trade setup, but the market doesn't doesn't look clear to you, the trend doesn't look clear to you, certain parts of the trade don't look clear to you, my suggestion is don't trade it, especially in the beginning. If you're a beginning or intermediate trader who is struggling to maintain profitability, when you have multiple trade setups to choose from for that day, my suggestion is to choose the cleanest and the clearest trade setups possible. So what do I mean by that? A clear and clean trade setup is one where you understand the trend very clearly. You have a very clear and precise idea of where you want to get in and where you want to get out in terms of your stop loss, in terms of your take profit, in terms of if you're wrong on your trade idea, hey, this is where you want to get out, that is your stop loss. And if you are right on your trade idea, this is where you want to get out of the market when the market proves you right, this is your take profit. So all of these elements are clear, also, the trend direction is clear. The price action looks clear to you. Everything looks clear and clean to you. If you got a setup like that versus one that you're not entirely sure about the entry or the stop loss or take profit location, always hands down choose the cleanest and clearest trade setup possible. Now, to give you an example of this, I'm going to walk you through a trade setup that I'm in right now and my exact process for choosing this trade setup, why I chose my entry, my stop loss, my take profit, why everything was so clean to me and clear to me about this one and why I chose this trade. So let's jump into this one. And we're gonna start by looking at corn over here. This is a trade I talked about with my members for quite a while. It's a trade I profited from before and it's one that just kind of really presented itself another opportunity. So let's kind of zoom out a little bit. We're looking at the weekly chart on corn here. And what can we see from this? Well, we can see that by and large, corn is in a very large range here. And it kind of has this resistance area over here, around 779, resistance here, resistance here with a little false break above it. And then we have a very major and large support zone around 303. And as you can see, this goes back several years, almost 13 years. But inside of this major range between 779 and 305, there has kind of been two other minor ranges. And that first one is here on the downside or the bottom side, which is this zone right here. And let's expand it a little bit and kind of zoom in to why I chose that. So we have support here, support here, support here. We really haven't been below this since July 2006. So we have several touches of support here. We have an almost touch of support here, almost touch of support here. But the bottom line is this commodity has not breached 303, 30, whatever it is around 300 for about 13 years. And other than these few brief spikes above it, a good portion of the price action has been contained within this kind of 303 to 437 range. There is another range, and this is the upper end of this range here. And you can see it right over here. Let's kind of close it off here and close this off here. And here you can see this is the upper end of this range. So this goes from about 779 to about 
553, so about a $220 range with just a brief few weeks above it and then kind of slam back below it. Now, here's where we are in terms of price action over corn over the last several years. So zooming into this most recent area, we can see that other than these few spikes here, here, and here, corn has spent the primary amount of time over the last four or five years since the summer of 2014 between this 437 and 305, 303 range. Now to me, that is a super clear structure in terms of the price action. I have very clear areas of support around here, 314, from this point here and this point here. We can bring the support up a little bit here, which is around 343 from this here, this whole support over here, over here and over here. And I have very clear areas of resistance. So I have kind of an interior resistance over here at about 404, which is from here, 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 and here. A little bit of support over here. Then I have another area of resistance here around 435, which is this here with a little bit of spike above it. Same here and same here. And then I have one other line of resistance, which we can draw kind of these spike highs, which is kind of between 455 and 466. So super clean in terms of the price action context. It's in a range for the last five plus years now. I have clear areas of support and resistance. I have clear understanding of the price action order flow. Hey, every time it's gotten somewhere around, you know, 324, anywhere between 324 and 342, it's usually bounced pretty good each time. Bounce, 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 very nice bounce here. So super clean, super clear in terms of deciding and understanding what's going on with the structure and the price action in the context. I have clear areas of order flow defined by the support and resistance. So this is a super clean train setup, and this is something that I'm looking for. I'm looking for these super clear and clean train setups. Now I have another example of this in the VIX, and this is also something that I traded before, profited from before, almost a very similar trade setup and idea, and I'm in it right now. And this is something I've been sharing with my members for quite a while, the last trade and this one now. So this is kind of based on the same principle. If you look at the VIX, we kind of zoom out. This is a daily chart. Let me zoom out to a weekly chart real quick. Okay. So since about 2012 to current day, talking about early 2012 to the current day, the VIX has been in between a kind of very large range between highs of 27s up to about 30 and lows of between say 10 and 15. And if you look at where the majority of the price section is, it's kind of in this zone here. The majority of the price section order flow is here between this kind of 10 to kind of 18, 19 range here. And the pattern is relatively clean and it's very clear. Hey, you know, it has these brief spikes up where it kind of shoots up and then it kind of drifts back down into this zone here. And then it kind of just meanders for a little bit. And then we have a brief spike up and then comes back down, brief spike up, comes back down, good spike up, comes back down to the zone, very sharp spike up, comes back down again, spike up down to the zone. Here's the deepest penetration, but then look what happens. Big spike up from the bottom of the zone. And again, back into the zone and up into the zone and up into the zone and up. So I have a super clean structure in terms of the price action. Again, we're in a very large defined range for a year. I also have clear patterns of behavior of having these fast spikes up and then the slow move down, meandering into the zone until another spike up, meandering down to the zone until another spike up and again and again and again. So super clear, super clean, very easy to understand the structure. I have very clear identifiable areas of order flow where the bulls are defending it and pushing the market back up. The targets are also relatively clear. They consistently push the price action up to about the high 18s, early 19s. If we get a little more gratuitous spikes, we get into the 20s and some really strong spikes here, 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 and here above 25. So. I have easy targets to define. I have easy areas of support and resistance of where I want to get long. And I have a very clear structure. Super easy to see this. Now let's compare this to a Forex pair that doesn't quite have as clean levels of order flow, price action, support and resistance. And that's the Pound Aussie. So the Pound Aussie, if you look, it's not stuck in a large range. It's kind of climbing, but the resistance areas aren't entirely the same each time and the support areas are constantly changing. So we have support here, it does hold here, but then the next sell off is higher. Next sell off goes above this prior resistance here. Then we have a shallow pullback. We make new highs, shallow pullback, faint highs, new lows, new highs, bigger lows, brief highs, 
shallow pullback, same area resistance, deeper pullback, and higher highs. So there's not much consistency on this pound Aussie pair in terms of clear areas of order flow, support and resistance, trend analysis, price action. The context is much different. In fact, if you're looking at this, I'm pretty sure that within a few seconds you can realize, hey, this is a totally different chart and it's much more difficult to trade than say the VIX or the corn chart that I was showing you earlier. Can you see the difference there? So this is what I mean when I talk about very clean, clear price action, trend direction, order flow, support and resistance levels. This is what I'm talking about. And Pound Aussie is an example of something that requires much more skillfulness, challenge. Everything's kind of moving. It's much more in flux. It's not as stable. You know, if something is not stable in terms of levels of support and resistance that it goes to, well, then that increases the difficulty and cleanliness of that particular trade. So my suggestion is, unless you can see these levels, these zones, this order flow, this price action, this trend direction very clearly, that you should be staying away from it as much as possible. Now, we are going to revisit this Pound Aussie chart for right now but I feel like I've kind of made a, a good point here in terms of what it looks like to find a really clean chart and what it is to find one that's not so clean so I want to move on to the second point here which is talking about trading big support and resistance zones this is the second tip here and we're gonna go back to our corn chart here so this is kind of a very important tip when trading support and resistance zones and this zone in corn really kind of exemplifies it Okay, so we know that corn has consistently found support over the last 12 or 13 years between the low 300s. And you can see that, you know, it consistently anywhere between the mid 300s down to the low 300s. Here, you know, is a deep penetration, low 300s, same zone same zone but this time it comes a little bit higher showing that the bulls are saying hey we're willing to get in at a worse price than here we have to have a larger stop loss and so we're gonna have less profitability but we feel very confident that this is a really good buy zone here there's obviously some strong order flow here and as you can see here because it pushes it up pretty strong, especially in this one here, saying, hey, this isn't a bad zone either. There's definitely some bulls that have had very strong orders placed here to push the market higher. Now here, this doesn't quite get to the same level of support as this low 300s. It's close, but not quite as close. Same thing here. And then again, we find kind of another area of support where bulls are just saying, hey, we'll take a worse price. We believe this is a good area to get long. And they do, and they get long and they profit from it. What happens when you find these very large zones of support and resistance to where there are multiple options to get long or short? This is a super important part of trading is how to trade these support and resistance zones because support and resistance is rarely ever a line in the sand and most often it is a zone of support or resistance really another translation for this is a zone of order flow because not all orders are going to be parked at the exact same price everybody has different thresholds for risk time preferences profitability targets and so because of that these large support zones often create different layers where bulls are going to get long. And the same thing for resistance, even though it's relatively clean, we can see that, hey, there was still some bears that were willing to say, okay, we'll take, we'll get in here and we'll sell it very aggressively to push this back down. Don't ever think of support and resistance as a line in the sand. Think of it as a zone of order flow. With that being said, I wanna get into the second tip here around these zones of order flow, particularly on this corn trade here. And we're gonna kind of zoom in and magnify this here a little bit more. So let's go ahead and redefine what I think is the major support zone for corn. So this is the second key tip, which is that when you have large zones of support or resistance, and you can see multiple locations where bulls or bears are defending that zone, well then the first thing you wanna do is draw what you think is that zone zone of support or resistance, and then kind of discern what are the early entry points, the midline entry points, and the deepest entry points into that particular zone. This matters for a very important reason. First off, the early entry points in a support zone have advantages and disadvantages. One of the advantages of getting into the early portion of the zone, which is in this case the upper portion of zone, is that it gives you the highest probability that you will get into the trade. Now, sometimes price action will come to a support or resistance zone, but it won't actually make it fully there. And maybe you had an entry order at a certain price. Maybe your entry order was here. And guess what? The last time it dipped in here, it didn't make it to your price. And guess what? It took off 
and create a lot of profit potential in this one here and you missed out of it. The early portion of the zone has the advantage of increasing the probability that you will get into the trade, but it comes with the caveat that it gives you the least amount of profit potential. And that is because most likely you're gonna have to place your stop loss below these lower layers in the zone. And so if you're getting higher up, and the market only goes so high, you have less profit potential than say someone who gets in here or here. Does that make sense? Upper portion of a support zone gives you the highest probability to get into the trade, but it offers you the least amount of profit potential as a whole. So there are strengths and weaknesses to getting into the upper portion of the zone. The middle portion of the zone, which is what I would define as kind of this region here, offers you a slightly lesser probability of getting into the trade. So you decrease the probability of getting into the trade, but you, that comes with the caveat that you increase the profit potential. If I'm getting in at this portion of the zone, say here, here, and here, and my stop loss is below these you know, this low right over here. Well, if I have the same target on each one of these trades, which is say 436, getting in at around 350 offers me an $86 target on this one here versus the upper portion of the zone, which reduces my profitability by about 15, $16 on an $85 target, that is about 15 to 20% different in terms of profit potential. So the middle portion of the zones here give you more profit potential, but they give you a slightly lesser probability that you will get into the trade. So you are potentially foregoing a good trade just so you can improve your profit potential and risk to reward ratio on this one here. It's important that you understand the dynamics of these different areas of the zone that you're getting in. Now, the next part should be pretty straightforward. The lowest portions of the zone offer you the highest amount of profit potential. So let's say you decide to buy at this low, thinking that the market's gonna make it back here again. So you get in around 322, and again, you're targeting 436. Instead of having an $85 target like the middle person in the zone here, you now have a $114 target. And your stop loss being below this here, you have a $20 stop loss roughly, and you have a $124 target for an almost 6R potential on that one. You have the opportunity to have the highest amount of profit potential, but the downside is, is that you decrease the probability that you actually get in the trade. Every time if you were to trade this zone multiple times and say, hey, I'm only going to get into the lowest portion of the zone, you would get two of these opportunities missing out on one, two, three, maybe four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. The downside of this is that you get less trades but you get a much higher R per trade, much higher profit potential. So you give yourself these high plus R trades, but at a reduced trade frequency. So this is the second tip, which is understanding in large zones of support or resistance, the early areas of that zone give you the highest probability entry, but the lowest profit potential. The middle portions of the zone give you a slightly lesser probability of getting into the trade while compensating for higher profit potential. And the lowest portions of those zones give you the highest profit potential with the least probability that you will get into the trade. Does that make sense? Does this help you understand zones a little bit more and how to trade these large zones of support and resistance? Okay, great. Okay, so let's look at the third tip and strategy for finding the best trade subs. This is more of kind of like a tactic in the sense of, hey, when you experience this situation, this is what you do. So let's go back to the Hound Aussie chart and we're gonna start off with the daily time frame, which is that chart we were looking at before. So do you remember how I was saying that the support and resistance in this isn't quite as clear? You know, we had some resistance here and here, then it makes a new low, then it makes a lower high, but then it makes a higher low. So those two are kind of contradictory to some degree, but then we make higher high and then a higher low. And then it just kind of, you know, this, the resistance isn't totally as clean as the corn or the VIX chart. You know, it's always in flux it's always moving when you find that horizontal support and resistance levels aren't quite matching up this is the third tip and strategy to shift your perspective from the horizontal to a more vertical or angular way or sloping way of looking at it so if you find that horizontal levels aren't quite working so well 
It worked here, but didn't work here. Definitely didn't work here. Definitely didn't work here. Violated here. You know, a little bit here and here, but gets blown past here. So when you find that horizontal levels are not working well, then shift to a more vertical or sloping style of looking at the price action. Look for upward sloping channels to look at this in more of a sloping way. If you notice though, again, that this is, as I said before, wasn't as clean. You know, you extend this trend line out and all of a sudden it just kind of no longer becomes valid. And the same thing with this one here, you extend it out and all of a sudden it just no longer becomes valid in the second half here. So this to me is unclean, as I said before, because it's so much in flux that you're constantly having to redraw zones of order flow and support and resistance. And when you have to constantly redraw them and constantly reshift them over time, if you remember the corn one, the VIX one, those are stable over years. This one's not. This is just, you know, a couple years of price action and everything's changing all the time. When you do see that horizontal levels aren't working, start looking for things on a more Y axis uh, way. Look at it more vertically or sloping up and down. And if you notice that it's constantly changing, then you have to change with it. This is a much harder scenario to trade than the VIX or the corn scenario. It requires more skill, more adaptability, and it requires you to be able to change with the market changing. The faster you can change with the market, the faster you can adapt your trade setups to do that. Now, along those lines, one thing I like to mention with sloping channels is that if you are gonna trade sloping channels, the best trade setups will always be in the direction of the slope. Why is that? Well, let's look at this for a second. What is the overall order flow of this channel from here to here? It's going up and it's continually making new highs, new highs, slightly new highs, new highs on the and higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. So if I'm shorting the upper portion of the channel, which is I think sometimes a good trade idea, just keep in mind that the overall order flow is moving against your stop loss. It is continually pushing up against your stop loss. Contrast that to the bottom side of the channel. If I buy here, the overall order flow is moving towards my profit target. And as it gets higher and higher in this channel, it's moving away from my stop loss. So if I was to get in on the bottom of this channel, let's just say I have a stop loss here. Well, as this channel progresses, guess what happens? The whole zone of order flow has moved from here up higher to here. What that means is, is that as the trade progresses, the overall order flow is moving away from my stop loss. That allows me to neutralize risk as the structure progresses. It constantly means that the order flow is in my favor and that it's less penetrating and threatening to my stop loss versus here, the next time it reaches the top of the channel, it's higher. So now we're in my stop loss zone. And then here, as it moves higher, it continues to move, threatening more and more of my stop loss. So the natural order flow of these sloping channels is best traded in the direction of the slope of the channel because the sloping of the channel and the order flows moving away from your risk and towards your profit, whereas the opposite side of the slope is moving against your risk and towards your stop loss. Does that make sense? Okay, so to review the three tips and strategies that I use to find and choose the best trade setups each day, the first one is find the cleanest setups possible. And this particularly refers to areas of support and resistance, super clean entry locations, where you can get in, where you can get out, where you can place your stop loss and take profit. If you have five, six, 10 setups to choose from the day, always choose the ones that look the cleanest and clearest to you. And if it doesn't look clear, you have a lot of doubts and questions about it. Certain elements just don't look clear to you in terms of the trend, the price section context, the order flow, where you wanna get in, where you get out. Just move on from that trade and just choose the ones that look the cleanest and clearest to you. The second tip is to look at support and resistance as a zone of order flow instead of a line in the sand. This is super important. And to understand the different areas of that zone in terms of what it means, in terms of profitability, profit potential, and probability that you're gonna get in the trade. So upper portion of a support zone has higher probability you're gonna get in a trade, but less profit potential. Middle portion of a support zone is gonna have higher profit potential, but slightly lesser probability you'll get into the trade. And then the deepest portion of the zone offers you the best risk reward, the highest 
highest profit potential, but the least probability that you're gonna get into the trade. So this is super important to understand this price action and probabilities around trading zones. The third tip in choosing the best trade setups for a particular day. The third tip is that when you find that horizontal zones of support and resistance are not working, instead of looking at the market horizontally, start to look at it in more of a sloping vertical context. And that could be downward sloping channels or upward sloping channels, but just start to look at it in a different perspective and then see if the market starts to make more sense. If it does, when you change your perspective, then you know you're on the right track. Also, it's important to understand that when you are trading these sloping channels to try and trade to where the order flow naturally moves away from your risk and towards your profit target, not moving into your risk and towards your stop loss. So what did you think of the video? I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to leave your comments and feedback, hit the like button below and also subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it as a small YouTube channel. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm and to continue growing and doing videos like this for free to help you all. So make sure to leave your comments and feedback in. I look forward to hearing from you. Have a great trading week and I'll see you in the next video.